contributed to approximately 40,000 deaths in Mexico. Now, the reforms that we have undertaken do not make any of the losses of life more bearable for grieving families. These tragedies do, however, portray ver in very stark terms the exceptionally difficult challenges that law enforcement agencies confront every day in working to disrupt illegal firearms transfers. Operation Fast and Furious appears to have been a deeply flawed effort to respond to these very challenges. As we work to avoid future losses and further mistakes, it is unfortunate that some have used inflammatory and inappropriate rhetoric about one particular tragedy that occurred near the southwest border in an effort to score political points. Now, nearly one year ago, while working to protect his fellow citizens, U.S. Customs and Border Protection Agent Brian Terry was violently murdered in Arizona. We all should feel outrage about his death, and as I have communicated directly to Agent Terry's family, we are dedicated to pursuing justice on his behalf. The department is also working to answer questions that the Terry family has raised, including whether and how firearms connected to Fast and Furious end up with Mexican drug cartels. In her independent review, I expect the department's acting inspector general to answer these questions. I understand that Congress also wants answers. Justice Department employees have been working tirelessly to identify, to locate, and to provide relevant information to this committee and to the two other committees that are investigating Fast and Furious, all while preserving the integrity of our ongoing criminal investigations and prosecutions. The Department has been fully cooperative and responsive in its dealings with Congress. I have answered questions in the House and the Senate on four occasions concerning this matter. To date, we have provided almost 5,000 pages of documents for congressional investigators to review. We have scheduled numerous witness interviews and testified at public hearings. And just last week, we provided an unprecedented access to internal deliberative documents to explain how inaccurate information was initially conveyed to Congress. Now, these documents demonstrate that Justice Department personnel relied on information <coughs> provided by supervisors from the components in the best position to know the relevant facts. We now know that some information provided by those supervisors was inaccurate. Now, I understand that in subsequent interviews with congressional investigators, these supervisors have stated that they did not know at the time that information provided in a letter to congressional leaders earlier this year was inaccurate. The documents produced to date also belie the remarkable notion that this operation was conceived by department leaders, as some have claimed. It is my understanding that department leaders were not informed about the inappropriate tactics employed in this operation until those tactics were made public, and, as is customary, turned to those with supervisory responsibility over the operation in an effort to learn facts. But what is clear is that disrupting the dangerous flow of firearms along the southwest border and putting an end to the violence that has claimed far too many lives, lives is and will continue to be a top priority for this Department of Justice. This year alone, we have led successful investigation into the murders of United States citizens in Mexico, created new cartel targeting prosecutorial units, and secured the extradition of more than 100 defendants wanted by United States law enforcement, including the former head of the Tijuana cartel. We've also built crime-fighting capacity on both sides of the border by developing new procedures for using evidence gathered in Mexico to prosecute gun traffickers in U.S. courts, by training thousands of Mexican prosecutors and investigators, by successfully fighting to enhancing sentencing guidelines for convicting traffickers and straw purchasers, and by pursuing coordinated multi-district investigations of gun trafficking rings. Now, despite this progress, we have more to do. Now, each of us has a duty to act and to rise above partisan divisions and politically motivated gotcha games. The American people deserve better. It is time for a new dialogue about these important issues, one that is respectful, responsible, and factual. This will require us to apply the lessons that we've learned from law enforcement officers, like the ones who sit behind me today, who protect public safety and our national security every day. In that regard, not only did ATF agents bring the inappropriate and misguided tactics of Operation Fast and Furious to light, they also sounded the alarm for more effective laws to combat gun trafficking and improve public safety. ATF agents who testified before the House Committee on Oversight and Government Reform this summer explained that the agency's ability to stem the flow of guns from the United States into Mexico suffers from a 
lack of effective enforcement tools. One critical first step should be for Congress to provide ATF with the tools and the authorities that it needs. Now, unfortunately, earlier this year, the majority of House members voted to keep law enforcement in the dark when individuals purchased multiple semi-automatic rifles, shotguns, and long guns, like AK-47s in gun shops in four southwest border states. Going forward, I hope that we can work to work together to provide law enforcement agents with the tools that they desperately need to protect the country and to ensure their own safety. And for their sake, we cannot afford to allow the tragic mistakes of Operation Fast and Furious to become a political sideshow or a series of media opportunities. Instead, we must move forward and recommit ourselves to our shared public safety obligations. I am willing to work with you in this effort. I look forward to your questions. Thank you, Mr. Attorney General.